A 0.150 kg glider is moving to the right on a frictionless horizontal air track with a speed of 0.80 meters per second. It has a head-on collision with a 0.300 glider that is moving to the left with a speed of um, 2.20 meters per second. Your task is to find the final velocity, both the magnitude and direction of each glider if the collision is an elastic one. Um, as you know, in our class, the very first thing that I always say and encourage is to have a sketch of the problem in order for you to um, have a mental picture of the problem that you are trying to solve. Now, in this case, as you can see, I already illustrated something here. And this A that you are seeing represents the 0 0.150 glider, so that is my representation for glider A. It is moving to the right, and that is why you are seeing that the velocity VAI, that means the initial velocity of glider A, moving to the right has a value of positive 0 0.80. Um, I use the convention that all motion um, going to um, the right, for example, this one, all motion going in this direction has a positive value, and on the left will have a negative value. So if ever we have an up and down motion, the up motion will have positive value and negative value. And take note, the, the sign of the velocities really do matter in these problems. For my uh, illustration here, I'm going to color my glider B as this one. This is representing the heavier one. As you can see, it's larger. So that is for your 0 0.300 kilogram glider. It's moving to the left with a velocity of 2.20 meters per second. So that is why, as I've said kanina, it will have a, appropriately a negative sign to indicate that it is moving or the velocity is moving to the opposite direction relative to A or on the left-hand left, left hand direction. Um, the questions that you have to ask yourself are these questions. So first is what type of collision is being exhibit, exhibited in the problem? Now, this is very um, specific in the problem, or it's specified that the collision is elastic. So if that is the case, then what is or are the quantities that are conserved, or is or are conserved? So um, you, you should be able to answer that momentum is conserved in this case, as well as the kinetic energy will also be conserved, because that will be... Um, very important for you to create the equations. So in order to solve this one, um, your solution should start with the conservation of momentum. So from the conservation of momentum, I'm just going <clears> to <throat> move that one. From the conservation of momentum, uh, we knew that the momentum before collision must be equal to the sum of the momentum after collision. But then again, before collision, the, this refers to the momentum of glider A, sub i, meaning initial, plus the momentum of glider B, sub i, the initial momentum also of glider B. And that should just be equal to the momentum of glider A, final, plus the momentum of um, glider B, final. So from there, we are going to break um, momentum, the, the, the momentum as we remember from, from our previous class is just mass multiplied by the velocity. So this equation will look like M, and do not forget about the subscript. To be very specific, that is mass of A, VAI, so I'm just going to put an arrow head, plus M sub B, VBI, will just be equal to the momentum of A, VAI plus, uh, sorry, it should be VAF because it's now the final velocity of A plus the momentum, of, I'm sorry, the mass of B, VBF. Okay, so this is your first equation. And I'm just going to put a box over there. So this will be, uh, as I've said, the first equation of your systems of equation. Now, um, I don't know why that is not working. Okay. If you try to inspect the equation, um, mass A is something that you know. VEI is something that you also knew. 
um, mass B, this is given, VBI is given, mass A, a subset is given, but this quantity over here is not given, and as well as this one. So if you notice, you have one equation, and then you observe that you, ha you actually have two unknowns. So in algebra, you know, you know well that what, what you should do in that case is you could not solve this case unless you have at least two equations. So this is where um, our search for the second equation. So where do we get the second equation? So simply, we will just base it on the quantities that are conserved. So from the first one, we have already used the conservation of momentum. So the next one is we will simply make use of the conservation of kinetic energy. So from the conservation of kinetic energy, this is telling us that um, the kinetic energy before collision should just be equal to the kinetic energy after collision. Now, I tend not to use um, this one because it tends to be very long, but I just have to recall that eventually this formulation of um, the conservation of energy will result to the fact that, I'm going to change the color, uh, the velocity of my ball A both, so both before collision or initial and final will just be equal to the velocity of ball B both before or initial and after final or initial before and after the collision because this is one of the things that we discuss about your um, elastic collision having um, conservation of its velocity as well. So this is quite an easier one to use, so I'm going to use that one. That means to say that the velocity of AI plus the velocity of your A after will just be equal to the sum of the velocities of glider B in this case, initial plus the final velocity of the glider B. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to use is I'm just going to isolate VBF, which is one of the unknown. So I will now have um, the velocity of AI plus the velocity of AF minus the velocity of BV VBI is just equal to the velocity of VBF. So I am hoping that it is apparent to you why I did this. So I'm basically doing this because I am planning, if you try to look at this one, VBF, I'm going to substitute VBF from equation 2 into the VBF here from equation 1. Okay, so I'm just going to do that shortly. I'll do that here. So I'll have substituting um, equation 2 into equation 1. So I'm just going to copy this one. Let's copy that one, um, paste, and let's do a little bit of cleanup. All right. So from this, this is your equation too, right? So I'm going to substitute uh, the expression of VBF, which is your equation two. So that will become MA uh, VAI plus mass of B VBI is equal to mass of A, VAF, plus, so this is where I will do the substitution. Oh, sorry, I, I still have to write MB, M sub B. And VBF is just VAI, this one over here. VAI plus VAF minus VBI. So after that one, I'm just going to distribute MB. So um, this will become like this one. So copy, paste. So nothing changes on the first terms. What will happen here is this term here will be distributed. So as you can see, your M sub B must be distributed to each of the term. As well as over here. So that would become MV, um, v, VAI plus mass sub B, VAF, minus the mass of B, V, 
VI. Now, upon inspection, um, this is actually very promising because this is given, this is known, this is known, this is known, this is known, unknown, known, known, unknown quantity, unknown, this is known, this is known. So we actually have VAF now as an unknown. So that means to say that we only have one equation with one unknown. So we can, from algebra, solve this already. Okay, so what I'm going to do is to isolate in one side of the equation um, the terms containing VAF. So this is the quantity that I will be solving for. So I will just have M sub A, VAI plus M sub B, VBI. Um, I will transpose this term, minus M sub B, VAI. And this one also, so this will become plus M sub B, V, B, I. All right, so what is left on the other side of the equation is just M A, V, A, F, plus M B, V, A, F. All right, so the next thing that you are going to do, I'm going to use um, coding on colors, is if you notice, V, A, I is common in this term as well as this one, so I'm going to group them uh, so that I can factor this later on. And if you notice also, the one in green contains VBI as well as this one. So I'm just going to rewrite where I can factor that eventually. So that would become VAI minus M sub B VAI plus M sub B VBI plus M sub B VBI. So this is looking great. On the other side of the equation, I'm going to factor out VAF, which is one of the things that I'm looking for. So what would remain is just MA plus M sub B. Okay, so I'm going to deal with this one. I'm going to factor again VAI in this case. So I have now MA minus M sub B plus, on the other hand, I will factor out VBI. So I now have MB plus MB, which is just 2MB, is equal to VAF multiplied by M sub A plus M sub B. All right, so this is very promising because I could just divide both sides by MA plus MB to get rid of that. So MA plus MB, so I will also do that here, plus MB. And as you can see on the left-hand side, I mean, yeah, on the right-hand side, this one will cancel out. So I am now left with VAF, which is I want, which is the equation that I am looking for. So I'm just going to rearrange the position, so VAF will just be this one over here. So copy, paste. All right, so that's your VAF. So for now, um, we have to substitute the values, and we have to be very careful to um, take heed of the, what's this, the signs. So VAI, if you remember from above, is just, let's take a little peek, okay? VAI is 0 0.80, that's positive, 0 0.80 meters per second. Your mass A, glider A, is 0. 150 kilograms plus, uh, sorry, it should be minus 0 0.300 kilograms for mass of B or mass of glider B. And then you add VBI. If you remember from here, VBI has a negative sign and you must include that negative sign. So it's negative 2.20 meters per second. Mass B is just 0 0.300 kilograms plus 0 0.150 kilograms for the mass of glider A. You divide everything by 0 0.150 kilograms plus, oh, I made a mistake. Um, it's a good thing that I noticed the mistake right away. So if you notice here, it's actually must be plus must be, so it should be 0 0.300 plus 0 0.300. All right, so from here, you just have to take out your calculator and do the calculation, and that will give you 
a value of negative, so I will emphasize the negative, 3.2 meters per second. So that means to say that the negative here indicates that it's moving towards the left, meaning if I go back to the um, illustration, after the collision, your A, which is the mass of glider A, is actually moving towards this direction. And if you start to think of it, I think that is highly logical in the sense that B is actually heavier as well as more massive. Uh, no, I mean, more massive and it's also moving at a larger velocity of 2.20. So, yep, it is logical to have um, the situation where after collision, your A actually moves towards the left. So you have to think also of that when solving um, physics problems just like this one. Because the answer should make sense. <laughs> All right. So we now have so for VAF. Um, right now, um, we are going to find for where is the glider B moving after the collision. So this is now very easy because if you go back to the systems of equation that you are getting, this is simply telling you that, oh, you can just use the equation that you have created before, that one. So to solve for BVF, you just have to do a little cleanup over here. To solve for BVF, you just have to substitute all of these values. So I'm just going to uh, interchange the positions of the equation. So that's VAI plus um, VAF. And then you subtract the initial velocity of VB. All right. So VAI is something that we already knew. So let's do a quick peek from the problem or the sketch over here. VAI is 0.80 and VBI is negative to 0.20. All right, so I'm just going to substitute that one. VAI is 0 0.80 meters per second. VAF is something that we have solved and it is negative 3.2. So you have to be very careful to indicate the negative there. Minus VBI. Also, again, if you go back here, VBI has a sign of negative, so be very careful to indicate that. It's negative 2.20, so you write negative 2.20 meters per second. So VBF, I mean the final velocity of glider B, after calculating that one, so on this term over here, this will become positive, this is positive, so 2.20. All right, so I think you can now see that the answer after collision is 0. Point, uh, it's just 0. 0.20 meters per second. But do not forget that the answer is negative. Right, this one here is the larger term, so this will bear the sign. So it's negative 0. 0.20 meters per second. So what does this mean? The negative here again implies that after collision, the object is moving towards the left. So this means that your ball B, we, we knew that ball A, I mean glider A will move towards the left, as well as glider B also, because the value that we are getting for VAF over here and VBF are both negative. So after collision, they both move towards the left, but they are moving at different velocities. So VAF is moving at a faster velocity, very fast compared to VBF, but they are moving on the same direction. All right, so this is the solution for this problem. If you have questions, then feel free to drop it on the comment section.